Former California Lieutenant Governor and USF graduate Leo T. McCarthy passed away on February 5th from a kidney ailment at the age of 77. Professor Pat Murphy, director of the Leo T. McCarthy Center for the Public Good, had this to say about his colleague. Having Leo kind of tell stories about his days in, in Sacramento is, is, is entertaining enough. To see him in the Capitol and, and kind of, if you will, in his own environment, uh, in an environment that he, he knew so well and, and people knew him so well was, was quite amazing. There's so. a lot of places, I think, where someone lends a name. Um, it's another thing where, and I think Leo had a, a different vision, which is he wanted to be really active in terms of the center. So Leo sits or sat on the board, um, but he also was involved with meeting with students. He even taught a class here. Uh, he helped us uh, place students in Sacramento for the internship program and the summer program. Uh, so he was here on, on a pretty regular basis. And Leo's vision was kind of twofold. He really wanted students to, to understand and be involved in state government, but he also wanted state government in Sacramento to know that USF is here. Longtime KUSF producer Dave Kitagawa passed away on January 30th from a heart attack at the age of 50. Known as Dr. Midnight, Kitagawa spent over 20 years at KUSF. During that time, he worked in many different positions, including producer of the Blue Moon and Time Warp shows, new music DJ, projection director, and keeper of the rock and swap tables. A college student wins a year of college tuition on eBay. Another student dies in an elevator accident, and a student newspaper reporter advocates in favor of rape. Chloe Shieldhouse has all these stories and more in your college update. A student at Central Connecticut State who wrote a February 7th opinion piece on the virtues of rape in the student newspaper has been forced to resign. Chom Petrowski wrote an opinion article titled, Rape Only Hurts If You Fight It, arguing that rape has been a positive force in Western civilization. A hundred students rallied in protest at the school, calling for Petrowski's resignation. Five college students at CW Post College in Brookville, New York, issued a public apology after making a video mimicking a Middle Eastern hostage taking. In the video, the five mass students spoke in crude Middle Eastern accents as they threatened and held captive the hall's mascot, a rubber duck. While the students say they were mimicking the animated film Team America World Police, school administrators quickly relieved the students of their resident hall duties. An 18-year-old freshman from Ohio State University was killed on January 24th by an elevator. According to the fire officials, the elevator had been crammed with people exceeding its weight limit of 1,100 pounds. The school's top elevator inspector, Norman Martin, puts no blame on the elevators, but states that students should take their elevator rides more responsibly by saying, quote, it's not playground equipment, it needs to be respected. So next time you encounter a crowded dorm elevator, you might want to think twice about boarding. And finally, with the cost of college tuition continuing to rise, one lucky student at Oklahoma Wesleyan University has locked in a tuition deal of a lifetime. Using the power of eBay, OKWU auctioned off a year of tuition, room, and board to raise awareness about its university. The auction closed $18,669 and change on February 4th. This is over $4,000 off the school's regular cost of $23,000. The auction's winner, Chelsea Blaine, is currently enrolled in college in South Dakota and will transfer to OKWU in the fall of 2007. This has been your College Report. I'm Chloe Shieldhouse, USF TV News 35. Let's take a look at how the Dons are doing in this sports update with Chris Bagley. I'm Chris Bagley and this is your sports update. On February 10th, USF hosted the Pepperdine Waves in the 2007 homecoming game. And the crowd was excited and ready for the tip-off, which was controlled by the Dons, who came up strong to start the game. Here's Danny Kavitz putting it up, and Johnny Duke slamming it down. Even the Don was happy at this point. Here's what Coach Evans had to say at halftime. We've got to continue to have some patience, come and meet our passes, cut down on our turnovers, and I think we'll be fine. Number 9, 36, USF 31, the second half. No, Don! Yeah. The Dons came up big in the second half and created turnovers like this one by Antonio Kellogg. He puts it up for two. Here's another fast break. Wiggins to Cavitz for three. Drained. USF never looked back. Final score, 82-70. I caught up with Coach Evans right after his post-game speech. Well, what did you tell your players in the locker room? Well, I can't repeat that on the public. Is this hey, public TV? No, no I don't think we can curse. We USF can't TV, you can, you can say anything you want. No, uh, we can't. We can't say the words that we <laughs> said in here. No, we just told them to take better care of the basketball. Uh, they, we thought that they gave a better effort, uh, Pepperdine did, than we did toward the end of the half. And we thought that we went out there with some energy 
uh, we could make a difference, and, and that's what we did. All right, huge game, USF, winner of the homecoming game. Alan Wiggins had seven rebounds along with three blocks, and I spoke with him in the locker room. You guys were a little down in the first half. How'd you turn around the second half? You know, extra effort, you know, uh, running, our, running the other team off the shooting, you know, rebounding the ball, and getting the defense to stop. So that helped us win. Alan Wiggins, 23 points, huge game. Back to you. The Dons baseball season officially started on February 2nd with a 6-2 victory over Fresno State in the season opener. They took two out of three in the series. Those wondering why we haven't had any home games, well we have. They have just not been played on Benedetti Diamond due to field construction. Fences and netting will be put up so no house will ever be hit by a Don home run ball. The first game to be played on the Diamond is March 22nd versus Southern Utah. Finally, volleyball coach Jeff Nelson and his assistants will not be returning this season. Nelson spent four seasons at USF and is the school's all-time winningest volleyball coach. After a season including a 14-game winning streak, a team record 23 wins, and the program's 300th win versus Gonzaga, Nelson is off to the University of New Mexico to coach the Lobos. I'm Chris Bagley, and that was your sports update. And finally, I'd like to take a moment to thank you, the viewer, for your support of USF TV News 35 in the past year. It's an exciting time at USF TV with our move online this semester. The first part of our new initiative has already launched in the form of a blog. Check out the USF TV blog by visiting usftvblog.blogspot.com. There you'll see posts from our executive board and show producers, including myself. We'll talk about our shows, exciting new developments at this station, or anything else that comes to our mind. It's also your chance to communicate with us by posting your comments on topics that interest you. In the coming weeks, you'll also hear about exciting new developments at the station, including more information about our move to streaming video online and video podcasts. It's all part of our commitment to being your campus news and information leader. We leave you with shots of the Queen Mary 2, one of the largest ships to ever sail into the San Francisco Bay. The almost four football field long ship sailed into Pier 27 on Monday, February 5th. On behalf of the entire News 35 crew, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.